All right, kiddos, I have a fun book to read to you guys, and you may have already heard this book in STEM with Mrs. Lindman, um, but if you did, you can listen to it again if you would like to, and I'm going to show you the cover. I took it off of the book, but it's Ada Twist Scientist, and so it's a really fun book, and it's written in a certain way, and I want you to listen and pay attention to see if you can tell me what is the style of writing that the author used for this book. And then I want you to think at the end, of course I won't um, have your answer or you can tell me another time when I talk to you, but did you like the way the author wrote it? Did the way the style of writing help it make it more fun and fun to listen to and fun to read? So this is Ada Twist Scientist and I love the cover on this book. Look at the cover. It looks like, have you ever tried that experiment where you drop the mento into a Coke bottle and it sends it shooting into the air? So it looks like she's doing that with all kinds of colored soda. So it looks really fun and all the kids are having a great time. So let's read Ada Twist Scientist. Ada Marie, Ada Marie said not a word till the day she turned three. She bounced in her crib and looked all around, observing the world but not making a sound. She learned how to climb and made her big break with a trail of chaos left in her wake. She ran through the day chasing each sound in sight and didn't slow down till she conked out at night. Have you already figured out what the author is using to write this book with? Her parents were frazzled but tried not to freak as Ada grew bigger and still did not speak. Clearly, young Ada, with lots in her head, would have something to say when it ought to be said. That's just what happened when Ada turned three. She tore through the house on a fact-finding spree and climbed up the clock just as high as she could. Her parents yelled, Stop! as all good parents would. Ada's chin quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and she simply asked, why? I think uh, if I saw Obed on top of our grandfather clock here at the house, I might be a little worried. Why does it tick and why does it talk? Why don't we call it a granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck to a rose why are there hairs up inside of your nose? She started with why and then what, how, and when. By bedtime, she came back to why once again. She drifted to sleep as her dazed parents smiled at the curious thoughts of their curious child who wanted to know what the world was about. They kissed her and whispered, you'll figure it out. Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid, whose questions and chaos both grew as she did. You see all the questions she's asking over here? Let me read some. What does it do? Why won't it? What is it for? Will it be the same? What if? Why? When will it? How can I find out? How does it? Can I? All those questions she has. Even Ms. Greer found her hands were quite full when young Ada's chaos wreaked havoc at school. But this much was clear about Miss Ada Twist. She had all the traits of a great scientist. Ada was busy that first day of spring testing the sounds that mockingbirds sing when a horrible stench whacked her right in the nose, a pungent aroma that curled up her toes. Zowie, said Ada, which got her to thinking, what is the source of that terrible stinking? How does a nose know there's something to smell? And does it still stink if there's no nose to tell? She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. She'd start at the start where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved best. Ada did research to learn all she could of smelling and smells, both the stinky and good. One hypothesis Ada thought could be true. The terrible stink came from dad's cabbage stew. 
She tested and tested, but soon Ada knew it was time to come up with hypothesis two. Remember, a hypothesis is a guess when you're doing a science experiment. You kind of put your, you think, what do you think is going to happen? And you make a guess, and that's your hypothesis. Then, zowie, the stink struck again, just like that. Hypothesis two, it's caused by the cat. The cat couldn't make such a stink on its own. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested. The test was a flop. She started again, but her parents yelled, stop. I don't think they wanted her, that her parents wanted her to put the cat in the washer. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the thinking chair now, by the time we count three. Enough, said her mother, that's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why, Ada questioned. Her mother said, no. What, Query, Ada queried. Her father said, go. You've ruined our supper. You've made the cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. She sat all alone by herself in the hall and Ada once more could say nothing at all. And so Ada sat and she sat and she sat and she thought about science and Stu and the cat and how are her experiments made such a big mess? Does it have to be so? And what is that part of success? Are messes a problem? And while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? Ada Marie did what scientists do. She asked a small question and then she asked two. And each of those led her to three questions more. And some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started at why, and then what, how, and when. At the end of the hall, she reached why once again. Uh-oh. Ada's doing a lot of thinking, but I think she probably should be writing her questions on a piece of paper. Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk. No patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter and sighed as they did. What would they do with this curious kid who wanted to know what the world was about? They smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. See, all of her thinking and all that she did was written on the wall. I think it's great to be curious, but I don't think moms and dads probably want you writing on the wall, so don't try this at home. And that's what they did because that's what you do when your kid has a passion and heart that is true. They remade their world. Now they're all in the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asks lots of questions. How could she resist? It's all in the heart of a young scientist. Now she's got a big roll of paper. She can do all of her questions on. And as for that smell, what can Ada Twist do? But learn all she can with her friends in grade two. Will they discover the stink that curls toes? Well, that is the question. And someday, who knows? is the end. And young Ada Twist had quite an inquisitive mind and had all kinds of questions. And you might have lots of questions about things. There's so many things that God has created in our world that you can learn about. You can learn about animals and you can learn about um, stars and space and um, why do some things stink badly and some things smell good. And so God gave you a mind to use to learn and to um, discover things. And you might be the next great scientist and discover some wonderful thing 
but um, make sure that you are always looking around, asking questions and trying to find the answers and using your brain that God gave you to learn everything you can about the wonderful world that he has created for each one of us to live in, to learn about, and to take care of.